And the other thing that I find very interesting is that when you want to look at a, a factor that no one is, is really brought out, and I, and this is a, a lot of people going to get mad. I'm going to say this: a lot of black people are angry at the Latino vote. They're pissed off at the Latinos that are voting for uh, Hillary Clinton and not representing uh, Barack Obama. Now the question, the question is why is there a difference? Some people say that because Obama really didn't reach out to the Latino community. And, and uh, especially the Mexican community, because we're not talking about the East Coast now. We're talking about Texas and California. Um, and my my question is: Is it you know someone brought the point that they wouldn't? Uh, and I mentioned on the last show that one of the activists in Texas said that she would never vote for Obama because he was black. And it was um, and Hillary Clinton had to come out and kind of condemn that person for what they said. Originally, she kind of sidestepped it. So I'm, I'm wondering to myself, is race a factor within the Latino community in terms of their support for uh, this particular candidate? Well, individuals who say things like that, I, I just write them off because it's ignorance. Mm -hmm. It's just total ignorance. I don't think anyone should write anyone off because of their color. Mm -hmm. But I also think that we need to, we, meaning the public in general, mm -hmm. need to evaluate the candidates based on mm -hmm. what they've done mm -hmm. and sometimes specifically what they've done for your se segment of the population. Right. Now, if Latinos can point out things that Hillary Clinton has done for the population, and not to get on their case because we as African Americans right. should be doing the same thing. Yeah, we should be doing the same thing. I mean, there's a lot of things that have gone on in mm -hmm. um, during the, the Clinton era and mm -hmm. since then, you know, as, as Hillary's held her political mm -hmm. Um, office. There's a lot of things where we can say that we wanted these things addressed and they haven't been addressed. So mm -hmm. until we can actually evaluate the entire situation, everyone on a whole is kind of going to be at a loss as to who's the right candidate. We, we have to have an honest conversation about the black and brown divide in terms of philosophy and, and uh, uh, ideas as, as to what is important to them. If the black and brown divide is going to come together, there has to be some type of common ground as where we figure we can work together to help each other. Uh, again, when I mean, you talk to a lot of Latino people, at least the ones I've spoken to, when they talk about the issue of immigration, they said that we were out there by ourselves marching. The blacks, people, blacks were not out there. Whereas blacks were saying, well, we had issues that were going on. Where were you at? You know, and and it, so it it makes sense that we have to be able to find some type of common ground. Um, another brother was, who, and I'm getting emails from people and stuff, and I'm going to raise this issue, and I don't care if people get mad. I really don't. They were saying that you know how do how do um you compete with people. In terms of, because you can't, they're not, it's not because of the birth rate that Latinos are the, the, the largest group in America, it's because of people coming in illegally. And so, how do you compete against that? Because now they, the, the Republicans or this quote unquote not, uh, group of people have used the Latino vote to kind of usurp the black vote or to replace it as one of the dominant minority group. And a lot of people are angry about that. And that's a, that's a valid thing to say, you know, because, because. Now, I'm not saying everybody that's here, but the 45 million people, are Latinos that are here are illegal aliens. I'm not saying that, because that's not the case. And obviously, they, they, they contributed a lot to this society. But there's an issue about naturalization of people that, are, that have come here illegally and trying to find something that is fair to everybody. And yeah. there's a lot of black people that are angry about it. Yeah, but you know, we have to place blame where pl blame is due. And I don't mm -hmm. think the blame is, is due on the Latinos or even the Ill illegal, because many times, I mean, comedians and other people have made right. jokes about how, you know, Latinos out here working hard and mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're doing the jobs that no one else wants to do yeah, anyway. Right. That's you true know, some and, and if you have that, I mean, there was a, a, a thing even within the African American community when people were complaining about people coming from the islands and taking jobs, you know, mm -hmm. there were a lot of people doing housekeeping and, Mm -hmm. taking care of people's children you mm -hmm. know but if no one else was doing it before and someone else comes in and takes it then you know why do you why should you have a problem with it I think there is because it's about access to political and, and economic power and there's not enough for the pie to go around and so when your pie is getting is getting cut you're going to look at somebody and say, well, why are they getting a bigger piece than I am? Yeah, but the blame, when I say the blame has been put mm -hmm. in place where it belongs, is the economic situation mm -hmm. is a problem because of the administration, because of some of the choices that they made. It's not the individual right. Latino group or the African American groups, et cetera. The economy, you know, this, I think in this world in general, mm -hmm. not to get too broad, I think there is a um, misconception mm -hmm. that there isn't enough to go around. There is. Mm -hmm. There's just two worlds. You know, there's certain people who are, you know, they're rich for their, their, the rest of their life and the next two, three, or, two well, or three generations. Is the have and then there's the other people nots. who are right. surviving on $10,000 a year with mm -hmm. you know three kids, things of that nature. But until we get to the point where we're making decisions politically, mm -hmm. um, internationally, you know, because all of the situation mm -hmm. now that the attention's on Africa, you know, because of the, the um, many problems that are happening there, mm -hmm. we need to actually have people 
look at the fact that if you run the economy properly and fairly, mm -hmm. there is an abundance. There's enough for everyone in this world. And, and of course, I mean, obviously we're not saying, we're not, I'm not interested in blaming anybody. I'm interested in that. And if it's someone that's a Latino person that, that is knowledgeable about this situation and wants to come on the show and talk about it, you can reach out to me and we can work out something where you can come on and kind of talk about this issue because we need to address it. Because there's a lot of people that are angry about this issue and, and, and it's going to be divisive. Be, and, and that's about economic and political power again, and f trying to figure out how how we fit into the pie. We're we're not the quote unquote you know number one minority any I mean anymore in the country. And a lot of black people feel that they've been looked over, but especially within the Democratic Party when we've been loyal. And then you you see all these people talking about uh, Latino interests as if we don't matter. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a lot of anger. But I also will say this uh, again when we talk about economics, when you look at those giant corporations that are farming, you know, Del Monte and all these other places, and you look at the work conditions. I mean, I can go back to the 60s and look at films and see black people doing those same jobs and then come back and see the Latino people are doing the same jobs and, and just ba barely able to subsist on what they're getting paid. So there needs to be some type of equity. We have to find a way that we can allow people because to come into this country legally and to be able to work. Um, I don't know how you do that without angering somebody. I was talking to a guy on the phone uh, happened to be a, 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 a white gentleman, and he's very angry. He was very angry about the Latino, he, Latino population, and he says that one of the things he said, and, and this is dealing with a case that, that, that was going back to the Supreme Court, which is something a little bit different. Where in Mississippi they were saying that they they were trying to keep them from printing ballots in any other in, any other language except for English, be, and his point was like, why are they able to come here and be able to speak any other language except for the language of this country? Now, the answer to that question is, first of all, there is no official language of this country. People, the majority of people here speak English, but there is no official, quote unquote, language of the United States, which, by the way, the Republicans are trying to pass to make it an official language. And, make, and they want to make sure that everything is printed with English. They said they put their grandparents had to figure out how to do it, so why don't they have to do it? Oh, bringing that up, you're going to get me off on a rant because. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you, that, you know. You know how I feel about the fact that when when groups or individuals or countries try and strip people of their culture, there's a problem with that. You know, mm -hmm. you you can't claim to be this, you know give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, and then turn around and tell people you can't speak the language you speak anymore or you have to try and Americanize yourself in order to assimilate because if we are supposed to be this great big mosaic of, um, you know, of a country, you should be able to accommodate individuals coming into various places and preserving their culture and still incorporating themselves into the, the country.